Welcome everybody. Today I want to talk about how to get non-Corsair RGB products to work within the Corsair IQ ecosystem. So let's go ahead and have just a quick discussion about some of the main RGB connections that you're going to find out there. Uh, you know, the main ones that you'll see is going to be the 5 volt ARGB connection. Uh, you know, there's kind of the Aura Sync standard, which is a three pin connection. Although the plug is kind of a four pin, it has a blank in that third spot. And so, you know, it's a five volt a data port and then a ground. Anyways, you'll find that standard three pin connection for AuraSync. And then Corsair, of course, still uses those same signals. They use a five volt uh, power signal, a data in port, and then a ground. So, but Corsair packages that up into a different form factor connection. It's just a standard three pin connection. It doesn't have that blank. It's just completely different. I'll, I'll put some, uh, graphics of those on the screen here to show you what the differences in those are. So most of the products that you find out there that are non-Corsair are going to have that, you know, kind of more standard three pin RGB connection. Well, that doesn't connect up to the Corsair ecosystem at all. And I've seen various hacks and things like that to get it to go because the signaling is the same. It will work. You've just got to get it plugged in. I went to eBay and I purchased just a pre-made adapter cable. And so it took a little while to come. There's various sources for this cable, but basically it has the Corsair connection on it, which is just a three pin, but then it just converts it to the more standard, you know, three pin RGB connection. So getting the connection is the first thing. And, you know, a good adapter cable is a good place to start. You can certainly make your own. You can hack these up. You know, you can, you can cut some Corsair cables and then mate them up to these if you want. I personally don't like doing that kind of stuff, but you look on eBay, look online, you can find these adapter cables. Uh, they're fairly common. So that's probably the cleanest and simplest way to get it done. Okay, so let's do a quick uh, bench test. We'll just go over these connections real quick. Uh, we've, we've covered the main styles of connections that you're going to find. Um, and so the very first thing you're going to start with is your Corsair controller. Now this might be a Commander Node Pro. It could be a Lighting Node Pro. Uh, in our case, just for purposes of simplicity, we're going to use the Lighting Node Pro. The first thing you want to do is we're going to start with the eBay cable, right? And again, there's many locations for this. You're just simply going to plug into channel 1 uh, or channel 2. doesn't really matter. And then this gives you the standard 3-pin RGB connection. And from here, you're going to just pick whatever device you want to plug in. Now, a lot of devices say this GIM uh, RGB light bar, for example, comes with a couple of different connections. It comes with its own proprietary, which is intended for the GIM controller, but we're not going to use that here. And then it comes with a three pin standard male uh, connection, and then it piggybacks into a female three pin RGB connection as well. So we can kind of piggyback some other devices on this. So let's start with by plugging that in. And so we'll take this connection here and make a good solid connection. Okay, perfect. And then we've got this remaining connection here that we can use. And so let's go ahead and connect up our Lee and Lee Streamer Plus uh, controller. And we'll plug that in. All right. So now we've kind of got a couple of different RGB connections here going back to the Corsair controller. Now, this, and this is going to be maybe a little different for every controller that you, that you look for, but this is a, you know, a fairly cheap GIM uh, fan controller that does do motherboard sync. So we're going to take the cable that was included with that, and we're going to use the four pin connection to get the signal over to that. And that's kind of proprietary to them. So we'll get that there. And then this gives us a female three pin RGB connector. 5 volts ARGB and then this does have this VDG connector which I've noticed a lot of them have and so in my testing this connector will work in the Corsair connection it's not keyed so you could go either way with it so you got to make sure you know that it's in the proper orientation and so we'll just take a look at this and I know that the power connection as I'm looking at it is on the left so I'm just going to match up the voltage portion of that connector here. We'll plug it in 
and we'll just slide it in, make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so now we should have our connections everywhere and we'll go ahead and power on. We will have to go in and do the lighting setup for this Lighting Node Pro. Okay, so once you get the Corsair IQ software loaded up, the first thing you wanna do is you gotta to go to whatever controller you've made these connections to, whether it be a Commander Pro, a Lighting Node Pro, or something else. Um, in this case, we're gonna to go to the Lighting Node Pro. You'll need to set these channels up, and this will be kinda of where we deviate from the normal setup with Corsair, in so much as that the channel is expecting a specific device. Corsair is defined, you know, that a Light Loop 120 fan has 16 LEDs in it, right? And so we really don't have that luxury here. They're, these products are not in their database here. So I found it best, and maybe somebody's got some better ideas, or maybe there's a chart somewhere, um, you know, that somebody's put together of which devices have them, how many LEDs. But what I have done is just select something, like RGB strips. Those will work for even the fans, and you just select enough strips to cover all of the LEDs that you have. So for example, let's start with uh, LED channel one here. And channel one has this GIM fan controller over here. So basically just these two fans are on that. There's not very many LEDs in each one. I don't know offhand how many. So we click lighting setup, go to lighting channel one. Let's just select an RGB LED strip. I get two strips connected. Now if we go to one, um, and then you go to two, yeah, and then you keep switching that over, you can see that one strip, it might be hard to tell in the video, but not all of the LEDs are lit. I think we're pretty close. And so we'll go ahead and select two. I think that'll give us the maximum number of LEDs, but you might have to go up to six. Of course, there'll be some limitations that you might reach in here, but that's for another video. So let's go ahead and do two here. And then for lighting channel two, I'm gonna just start with the same thing. I'm gonna just select an RGB LED strip and then we'll get this bar to light and we'll get our streamer plus cables to light up. So I've currently got six selected. If we go to one, this will give you the basic idea. And you can see that, you know, we get just the first 10 lit. If we go to two, we get the next 10. We go to three, then it finished. With one strip connected, you can see that even the streamer plus, they don't fully light. So let's, let's go four strips. Okay, so at this point, now I think we've got enough RGB. You could also select fans here as well. You know, you could just go, and then these are little markers for the individual fans. And so you just, but it's the same concept. Once you start throwing lighting sequences to it, um, it'll either look good or it won't. You can mess around with this in here at this point, but for our purposes today, let's just stick with an LED strip and we'll go four strips are connected. Then you can come up here and go lighting channel one and we'll disable instant lighting because I had that selected for white. Now you can see that we've got kind of a rainbow effect on everything. Let's go ahead and delete all of the functions here. That's lighting channel one. We'll delete that. We can turn them off. Now if we go here, we can do our typical predefined ones. We can do rain or we can do lighting link and turn it on on all of them. So there's a rain effect and you can see that everything is now playing with Corsair. It is not perfect. You can't get all of the fancy sequences. I mean, you've got to mess around with it and kind of try to get it all lined up correctly. You know, like these fans here, you can't control them individually. So that there are some limitations with it, but for just kind of a simple little cable or using the VDG cable that some of these products are going to have, it actually works pretty good. And there's visor, you know, you, we're not going to go through all of the sequences. So anyways, you get the main point. And then of course you can go up to the instant lighting, you know, select everything and there's red, green, blue, purple. You get the idea. So, and the memory always takes a second to, it's always last to change for some reason. But, uh, anyways, that is just a, a, a quick, easy way to get Corsair connected up to everything. 
and I think it looks pretty good. It works decent enough. It, it beats having to use kind of some of the internal functions and things like that for just really a simple cable. And uh, I'm not aware of any issues with this or long-term effects, you know, by implementing this into the ecosystem. If anybody's aware of any of that, the only precaution I could maybe see is, you know, overloading it or maybe throwing too much, well, I don't know. If anybody's got any knowledge in that, I'll have to do a little research. But I've messed around with this quite a bit, and I've, I've not had any issues with it. So, all right. Well, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you know, let me know in the comments below. If there's other things you'd like to see as far as, like, different connection types and, you know, experimentation or, you know, if there's some other products out there that do this better or whatever, let me know. I'll be happy to mess about with it. So anyways, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thanks for watching.